Aloha and welcome. Uh, my name is Peter Rossig, and this is the Two Wheel Revolution on Think Tech Hawaii, the program where we talk about uh, micro mobility or personal mobility, uh, e bikes and e bikes, uh, e scooters, e skateboards, uh, walking, and uh, any other way you can use your own uh, engine to uh, and a little bit of a boost to get around uh, without using an automobile. Uh, so uh, we are very fortunate today to have uh, Jess Thompson who is uh, with the Hawaii Public Health Institute, and she's going to tell us about their activities. Uh, Jess, welcome. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you so much. So happy to be here. All right. So when I first picked up your card, I thought it said Simon Program Manager. But I, when I looked more closely, it's SAIM Program Manager. So you got to tell us what is SAIM. Um. And SAIM is an acronym for Safe, Accessible, and Inclusive Mobility Program Manager at HiFi. All right. That's terrific. And just for the record, since uh, what is HiFi? Uh, it's, not, it's not a kind of, it's not how I hear my music, I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> um, is it? all, it's also an acronym and it is um, an acronym for Hawaii Public Health Institute. We are the only statewide public health institute in Hawaii. Okay. And this is a, what, a private nonprofit, I, I guess. Yeah, this is a nonprofit. Um, and we've actually been around uh, since 2012. Well, since originally 1996. Um, and we began as uh, the Coalition for T Tobacco Free Hawaii. Um, in, wow. Yeah, in 2012, the organization moved from a singular focus on tobacco um, to a broader public health mission. And we really became the first and only public health institute serving Hawaii. Um, our work it also includes, you know, food and agriculture access, obviously transportation and mobility, um, oral health healthy eating, active living, um, specifically in regards to systems issues and access issues, drug and alcohol prevention, tobacco, COVID-19. We have a lot of different uh, programs and projects. And the SANE department, Safe, Accessible, and Inclusive Mobility, um, is only a nine-month-old program of Hi-Fi. So we're, uh, we're just emerging. And how did the... the how, I don't think most people would automatically think of transportation or... Uh, especially personal mobility as a, as a public health issue. Uh, most people would say, oh, it's a dry, it's a traffic, uh, it's, it's uh, in law enforcement or something else. What, how does it, how does it become a public health issue? Um, so there's just been growing awareness um, within public health uh, institutions that the way we have designed our communities, um, we often call that the built environment either promotes or prevents people from moving their bodies by walking, bicycling, as you said, you know, e-scootering, e-biking, um, and also taking mass transit where they need to go. And we know that health is tied to access to fresh, healthy foods and also easy access to places to walk and roll. And the job of the SAM department, which is currently Department of One, but will be growing, uh, is to connect people with lived experience. So people um, living in communities, uh, speci specifically people who are most impacted by poor public uh, built environment design uh, to government and health resources to make our mobility system safer and more inclusive. So um, that's our goal. All right. Well, you've, you've, you picked a very easy goal. It'll be no trouble at all to get. Oh, I mean, yeah, all straightened could... out in no time at all, right? One one year probably. <laughs> well, I think you've got lifetime employment because uh, this is going to be a continuing problem. We see it all over, and we see, you know, we see the effects in bad bad public health, but also in the environment of uh, not enough people taking advantage of the ways you can get around. Uh, without necessarily using your car. There are, as we were getting more and more public transit and more and more bike lanes and all the rest. So how do you, what do you do? I mean, how do you, once you started said, okay, transportation, personal mobility is a public health issue. What, what's the next step? Um, so anything in public health really, you know, involves coalition building. And so um, public is, 
you know, the word public is the idea of people, um, a collective group of people. And our job is to connect with each other over why have why have our communities been built the way that they are? And we need to get really curious about that. Um, and we know that there are proven responses um, that uh, support improved health, safety, access, inclusivity um, in the what we call the public right of way or the places um, in which we have shared um, access to being mobile. Um, three that come to mind are Vision Zero, um, which is, you know, um, a six-pronged strategy, um, which we call the six E's. Um, for yeah, we had uh, we had Daniel Alexander on a recent program talking about Vision Zero, and so you know exactly, yeah. So, and, well, I know, but to, go ahead, tell tell our audience about a little more about how that interacts with what you do. Well, you know, this it's a policy issue. First, it's a policy issue to to make the change. First, we have to make it policy. Then we have to fund it. Then we have to implement it. Um, and we're, you know, the state has implemented both Vision Zero and Complete Streets um, as policies that they would like to see implemented. Um, the counties are at differing le places for that. Um, a real challenge that we see now is um, implementation. Um, we've essentially designed the built environment um, to prevent people from safely walking and rolling on a regular basis, um, specifically our most vulnerable road users, which we know to be um, our Kapuna, our students um, directly before and after school, uh, and um, people who are commuting via mass transit at night. So um, because we have designed a system, we now that is inequitable, it's bad for our public health, it's bad for our climate, um, and it's bad at actually getting people where they need to go in a timely fashion. Um, we have to retrofit it. And we looked at Vision Zero on Complete Streets as and Safe Rest of School as policies that can help us move that along. Um, we have those policies. We are getting a lot more funding thanks to the BIL, um, but thanks to thanks to what exactly the federal um, infrastructure, um, you know, money that is coming down through um, the federal Department of Transportation. Right. There's lots and lots of federal money um, being poured into um, you know solving and retrofitting our communities uh, for safer um, and more accessible uh, mobility. But really, honestly, a challenge for us is um, implementing it. So we have these policies and we, you know, we don't have a lot of, um, there's not a lot of political and actual, um, I don't want to say will, but I would say experience in how we bring these funds to bear on the streets for the people, by the people, of the people. Yeah. I know and, every time but, people put in traffic calming or speed bumps, uh, I, I'm sure the Department of Transportation and Department of Transportation Services get pushback from people on that kind of stuff. Why are you slowing me down? Why are you ruining my tires? Um, is that what you mean by experience? Um, yeah, there's that. That's definitely one. We need like actual, you know, public uh, involvement um, for the people who are walking and rolling and taking the bus um, to say, uh, and also drivers um, like my husband and uh, probably all of us, um, many of us at, uh, who watch, um, who are watching this uh, show. Um, it takes all of us asking for this. And also, legitimately there are challenges in spending federal funds um and our state does not have um as much as experience as other states um for example oregon um minnesota you know plenty of other states are taking um advantage of uh the federal funds and have figured out a way to get them on the ground on the streets faster and better 
Um, and we're still working to figure out um, what the road bumps are, so to speak, uh, in 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 getting those federal funds. So you work with Vision Zero, you work with Complete Streets Program in the city. Uh, are there other organizations or or institutions that you work with uh, to to get this work going? Yeah. So, um, you know, th- those are policies that we support and statewide, we don't have a vision zero. We have a statewide policy, but we don't actually have an office. Um, and in the same way, so the city and county of Honolulu has, a um, has a pretty progressive, uh, and, and better funded, um, department for Vision Zero and Complete Streets to move those policies forward. The the neighboring counties do not have that, period. Uh, and so we're, um, we're, we operate statewide and we support counties um, and communities in the counties um, trying to figure out how we can um, best uh, help them realize um, complete streets and vision zero policies um, on the ground. So the community, you know, a lot of the grassroots communities that we work with um, include K Vibe, um, KKV, and Kalihi. No, no more. We can't do acronyms. K Vibe is the Kalihi Valley uh, bike experience. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, and the other um, one. And, that, and KKV is their um is, oh, cool, uh, Kalihi Valley. Yes, exactly. Okay, good. Good, good. Thank good. you. All so, right. Well, we gotta not talk in acronyms if we're gonna talk to our people who don't know acronyms. That's ask- so true. And if we know anything about transportation professionals, it's that Dark. Love. love that love that jargon. Yeah. Love that jargon and love to put up a lot of signs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so um, you, I, we we know that here on Oahu there is kind of a mini epidemic of of traffic crashes of deaths uh, of pedestrians of deaths of people in uh, automobiles. Is it is it similar on the neighbor islands that uh, yeah. neighboring counties uh, that there's a lot more traffic uh, crashes? I'm not saying accidents anymore. I've learned not to say accidents. We say traffic crashes. Crashes. Uh, it's so, definitely it, design. It's all right. definitely design. Yeah. So if is it also happening on the on the neighboring counties in the neighboring yeah. counties? Yeah. Um, and you know, some of the reasons are besides the fact that we've designed, you know, a really um terrible system in many ways for um our health of our peoples and the health of our planet. Um also our cars are just too big. Um, and you know, they're the, the bigger your car goes, the faster you're moving, the more dangerous that vehicle becomes. Um, and so number one, our cars are too big. Um, number two, too, too few people in each of those big cars. Exactly. I may say, go ahead. Yeah. Um, our cars are not currently built for the safety, our our roads are not currently built for the safety of walkers and rollers and, um, people who take mass transit. And then three, our mass transit systems are not frequent enough. Um, and especially in rural areas of Hawaii, especially the neighboring counties, um, it, it, it is a real barrier. Um, to getting where you need to go. And it definitely affects public health. Um, We know that people who do not have access to um, safe, frequent, accessible mass transit who live in rural areas are going to, you know, suffer from all sorts of public, you know, uh, or excuse me, health issues, detrimental health issues like social isolation, depression, not having access to medical care, um, Food, you name it, um, and so we could, we can solve uh, this issue for our planet and our health um, tomorrow if we made our car smaller, if we redesigned our roads so that they uh, slowed cars down and made room for people who are walking, rolling, and taking mass transit, and if we increased our mass transit um, frequency and reliability statewide. 
So the question really is to me, we've had this basic infrastructure for a long time. And if in a way in Oahu, at least it's gotten a little better with some bike lanes and some, uh, some traffic slowing, the speed bumps and some uh, calming measures. And yet in the last couple of years, we've had this uh, increase actually in the number of deaths from traffic crashes. And uh, Daniel Alexander, Vision Zero, pointed out that even during the pandemic, when there were a lot fewer drivers, people not, not as many people on the road, the numbers didn't go down. So why do we right now, do you have any ideas about why right now we seem to be experiencing this mini epidemic of, of deaths, one on average, one on Oahu, on average, one a week? Uh, and uh, as you know, that means 52 people and hundreds of relatives and friends and uh, and people who are impacted by this. So why is it, any idea why it's going up? Um, our cars are getting bigger. Uh, and, um, you know, it's, it's a lack of, of, um, of political will to move at the speed at which we probably need to move. Um, and that's just the reality of it. Um, there are some, some promising spots, certainly, you know, um, the DOT, HDOT putting in the race crosswalk, um, we're looking forward to see the scale that, you know, that's kind of the scale that we're talking about that we would need to see changes. Um, we're hopeful that those are being rolled out this year at, you know, at the scale at which we'd like to see. Um, hopefully those are going to make some improvements. You know, um, it, it, it really comes down to, is this, is this a problem that we collectively want to solve? Do we see this collectively as a problem that needs to be solving or do we see it as collateral damage? Um, I, uh, you know, for the life that has, you know, been created here. Um, and it's not just here. It's, you know, these are definitely um, data and um experiences that we're seeing across the country um as well so it's now we're not we're not particularly unique i don't think no. in that in that respect no so we we if we saw it as the climate emergency and the public health emergency that it is um we would find the solutions um quickly uh and my hope is that um, we are going to see the movement continue to grow. I was really, you know, you and I met at a really powerful um, event where um, we there were a lot of people doing very similar advocacy, kind of work all in the same room together um, for the first time, possibly, uh, saying where, why, this is an emergency. Why are we not doing more? Um, and we were able to, you know, see some big successes this year. We were able to pass, you know, the Safe Routes to School the, uh, bill, the HB 600. It allocates $20 million. I mean, it's a drop in the bucket, but compared to what we were getting before, which was right. nothing, uh, it's it's a win. Um, it, you know, it, it, um, it outlines the... Um, uh, the need for a task force um, of stakeholders committed to solving this problem. Um, it requires that the county and HDOT have safe routes to school coordinators um, who are dedicated to using um, Vision Zero, Complete Street, Safe Systems approaches uh, to solve some of these issues. So, um, so there's hope. Well, if you look at some of the examples of public health efforts, I mean, smoking, you, I didn't know that you started out as a coalition, the uh, anti-tobacco coalition. <laughs> smoking has gone way down. Uh, that's a public health win. I, I think everybody uses a seatbelt nowadays. That's a public health win. Uh, there's, uh, you know, teen pregnancies, uh, drug use in some areas at any rate, uh, teen drug use going down. So I, I think there's some reason to say, you know, public health, is the way to go. Law enforcement has its place and advocacy has its place. But uh, if we can see it as a health issue, uh, maybe more people get on board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope so. That's my hope. And I believe it. You know, if we look at other places, um, you know, we know that that is true. And so and the history of, you know, 
um, the interconnectedness of Hawaii. Um, and if we can get back to um, seeing um, indigenous ways of knowing um, and doing as, you know, leading the way uh, for us to live in balance, um, which means, of course, uh, listening and believing uh, the people most impacted by disinvestment um, and systemic oppression, such as Native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islanders, including Micronesian peoples. And so, um, you know, I think that is going to be the 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 coming um, opportunity uh, for the movement uh, for public health and uh, mobility is to really get curious um, and uh, and believe people um, when they share what solutions they need in their communities to make it safer and more accessible for them to get where they need to go. You're just launching a new website, I understand. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. Uh, could not be more excited about this. Um, so we have, uh, you know, we have funding from the Department of Health, essentially, to create um, what is the Health and Physical Activity Hub. Um, and we have, in doing uh, surveys of our community partners and asking them what kind of information would you like to, you know, this website to include, Overwhelmingly, we heard that we wanted the information to center um, the people who have um, historically and currently been impacted by systemic inequities. Um, and so we know that Kapuna and Keiki are some of our um, the age groups that are most impacted by inequitable outcomes right now. Um, only 11% of high school girls are actually getting the um, physical activity that they need. Um, and a big part of that is just a lack of safe places to walk roll, walk and roll um, in the public right of way. And so we created, uh, along with Kavehi uh, Mahi Roberts, um, she was a partner in this project, um, a one-stop place for you to get any information you want about wa safe walking, biking, rolling, event, policy, you name it. Um, and it is like no other a uh, one-stop hub I have ever seen for active transportation. Um, and I am so excited uh, about its launch September 1st. So, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, in a future program, I'm going to have some some visuals from that and we're going to make an effort to uh, to really, really publicize that. Maybe I, I can get the artist to come on and, and, and maybe the two of you or the artist can tell us about how uh, this came to be because it's very, it is very exciting. Uh, well, so, yeah, it would be great if you would, because let me just tell you about Kavehi and how she came to this. So we did a project, a quick build project uh, in Keokaha. Uh, in Keokaha on Hawaii Island is um, is a beautiful neighborhood. Um, it's on, uh, it's a DHHL land, ah. um, and it's the third oldest. Uh, DHHL community in the state. Um, it is, uh, the school is in the Pico of the um, community. And the, the Pico, for those of our, my, both of my viewers who don't know, is the belly button. It's the middle. Yeah. The middle. Sure. Yeah. Right. And so it is um, the school at, is, is, basically um a, a large four um block or a, a block square um center with school um the fire department the uh, baseball fields are there and the parking was in the um basically was back in all the way around the entire pico so the kids when leaving school would have to walk in front of the cars to get to where they need to go. So we did a quick build project, uh, you know, surveyed the community, gave the community options, three options on how to improve it. They picked the one that 
put a walkway around the entire Pico so that the kids would be safe from the cars. Um, and then we hired an artist from the community, and it was Kavehi Mahi Roberts, who um, created the most beautiful murals you have ever seen that are tied to the plants. And the kids helped design it and paint it in the in the Pico. Um, and she became just um, a true champion for transportation equity and um, and has participated in the transportation equity hui um, statewide and I I can't say enough great things. Uh, well, and, we're yeah. we're definitely going to have her and I hope we'll have you back again uh, in in a month or two and we will talk about this because uh, this is exactly the kind of thing that I love to hear about and I think our our, our many uh, viewers like to hear about as well. So we've only got a couple of minutes left. And uh, uh, so you're a department of one now, but what's the plan uh, going forward? Um, the plan is uh, to hire um, a program coordinator. Uh, and we have um, within the next year or so, um, and we're identifying funding for where that can um, come from. Uh, and Ideally, we will have um, eventually uh, folks on each island that are dedicated to, you know, supporting communities like Keokaha that are interested in um, solving a lot of the um, uh, inequitable built environment issues. No, I will say if if the if you if side men or side or si Sam has only one advocate. They couldn't have a better one than you. You're just as enthusiastic, uh, uh, you know, on a long-term uphill battle, to be very frank, as soon as anybody could possibly be. So that is that is terrific. So we've been talking to Jess Thompson, uh, who is the... Uh, uh, tell me what SAM stands for, Simon. Stands Safe, for. Accessible, and Inclusive Mobility Program Manager. There we go. I love it. Uh, part of the uh, Institute, uh, part of the Hawaii uh, Public Health Institute. Uh, if you want to see their new website, you, the easiest way is to go to uh, HIPHI, Hi Fi, the Hawaii Institute of Public Health, the Hawaii HI Public Health Institute.org. We'll, we'll get that right sooner or later. Uh, HIPHI.org, and there'll be a link there to take you to this uh, health and safety uh, um, hub. And uh, um, I haven't seen it, but I'm told it's a stunningly beautiful website. So please take advantage of that. Uh, we're going to learn more about it in a later uh, program. Jess, I want to thank you so much. Uh, it has been educational for me. Uh, I, I didn't even know there was a transportation equity uh, hui. So, uh, you know, and now I got to go find out about that. Uh, I really appreciate the time you've given us. And um, I hope our, our both my regular viewers and many other people will learn about it going forward. Uh, and uh, I'll, all I can say is that we hope. Thank you. Thank you so much.